God never does evil. But as we are going to see, and in fact as we saw last night, he ordains any evil that anyone does. So I wanted to make a video just explaining a bit about what my motivation is, what my purpose is in making videos about Calvinism and answering kind of why it is that I'm interested in this topic in the first place and why I think it's important. So I became interested in the topic of Calvinism probably around 10 or 11 years ago and it, it really started due to Romans chapter nine. So I, I definitely would not ever um, say that I was a, a Calvinist um, in any real true sense, more just that I was open to the ideas of it. You know, my mindset at that time was that when I thought about that being possibly what Romans nine was communicating, you know, more of a deterministic, uh, fatalistic, I think, view of God and the world, when I would think about that, you know, I had some moral and emotional apprehensions toward it, but in my mind, I was going to go wherever the Bible led me. And so I was very much uh, open to embracing that idea if I be became fully convinced that that is what I thought Romans 9 was actually teaching. But I came to a pretty, you know, s convinced conclusion that as I looked at these different passages, that the way Calvinists were handling them was just uh, inaccurate. When you look in the context of, you know, the big hitters like Romans 9, I think there's just much better ways of interpreting these passages than what uh, than the way Calvinists uh, handle them. Even though I had that moral aversion, I'm convinced that that was not my ultimate reason for rejecting it. I today stand here not embracing Calvinism because I am 100% convinced that that is not what the passages like Ephesians 1, Romans 9, John 6, and you know the others scattered through, throughout. I just I don't think that's what they're saying. I think, again, there's much better ways of understanding uh, the context of what is being communicated by these various authors and what their intention was. I think the biggest part of my um, non-Calvinism came from studying this concept of union with Christ and coming to understand it in a particular way. And when I came to kind of my conclusions about what I thought it means to be in Christ, how that happens, when it happens, who it happens for. So it was by looking at that concept of union with Christ that then I recognized, um, at least from my opinion, my understanding, the way I see it now is that when you understand what it means to be in Christ and the things surrounding that, I think the ideas of Calvinism become impossible. Union with Christ begins to sort of dismantle and, and contradict these Calvinistic ideas. Once again, the purpose of this video is not to dive into unpacking all that stuff, but just to, to give you a bit of a brief summary, I guess, of, of why I'm interested in this in the first place and that I, I want to um, dive into some of these things. And so I plan to do that in the future. I do have a playlist that I've made that has all of my videos about this topic, about Calvinism, that I'll put in the description of the video if you're interested in checking some of those out. So we want a handle on how to manage this paradox or mystery that God forbids things he brings about. And God commands things that he hinders from happening. Without this category of thought, I don't think you can make sense out of the Bible. So why do I think Calvinism is problematic enough to make videos about. First off, I'd say that very prominent Christian figures today, some of the most prominent pastors and Christian leaders, the John Piper, John MacArthur, you know, the, the late R.C. Sproul, um, even, you know, people like James White or um, entire ministries like the Gospel Coalition, the most influential 
organizations or individuals in Christianity today, the ones who are really in some ways have the loudest microphone, they are teaching a very deterministic and fatalistic view of God and the Bible. And so I think that more people need who who are non-Calvinists who have, you know, who can approach this in a way that I hope I can, in a way that is respectful, rational, and biblical, and just offer alternative perspectives and say, look, when you listen to these guys, it seems as if, you know, this is the gospel. You know, Calvinism tulip is the gospel. It's basically, you either believe the the doctrines of grace, you, you embrace tulip, or you reject the obvious teachings of the Bible. That's sort of the idea. And so I just think people should be able to hear that, no, that's not true. There are other options, very legitimate, scholarly, and I think even more biblically, contextually based arguments and ways of handling passages like Romans 9 and Ephesians 1. The third chapter of the Westminster Confession begins with these words, God from all eternity did by the most wise and holy counsel of his own will, freely and immutably ordain whatsoever comes to pass. Has God predetermined every tiny detail in the universe, such as dust particles in the air, and then I should add here, including all our besetting sins? Yes. I'm going to express what I think is an honest, and accurate um, summarization of what the ultimate implications of Calvinism are. To do that, I just, I wanted to read a quote. I know that quotes, anybody can pull a quote out of context and make the writer of that quote or, or that whoever spoke it look, you know, bad. That's not what I'm trying to do. Um, I think that this quote is a reflection of an overall stream of teaching, whether from John Piper or, or you know, what I'm going to read from John Calvin, sort of, again, the prominent Calvinist figures. I think this, this what I'm about to read, is a, is a kind of summarized representation of what some of the ultimate conclusions of Calvinism um, uh, are. So, John Calvin says... How foolish and frail is the support of divine justice afforded by the suggestion that evils come to be, not by his will, not by God's will, but by his permission. Uh, so if you're not following that, what he's basically saying is it's, it's foolish to say that evils, evil things, sinful things, bad things come about in this world simply by God allowing them to happen. Instead, he's saying it's not simply that God allows them to happen but it's that it comes about by his will. So he goes on to say, it is quite a frivolous refuge to say that God permits them when scripture shows him not only willing, but the author of them, who does not tremble at these judgments with which God works in the hearts of even the wicked, whatever he will. So you hear that he's saying God works in the hearts of the wicked, whatever he will, rewarding them nonetheless, according to desert. Again, it is quite clear from the evidence of Scripture that God works in the hearts of men to incline their wills just as he will, whether to good for his mercy's sake or to evil according to their merits. So God inclines the hearts of men to do evil. And so if you're understanding him, John Calvin, the namesake of Calvinism, what he's arguing for and what you'll, there's other quotes where you can hear uh, John Piper talking about this and, and making similar statements, uh, just very uh, clear to the point statements about this. He's saying that God not only causes men's wills to be inclined to do good things, but he's the ultimate cause, the author of the evil decisions, you know, not, not just the desires, the will to do evil, but then, you know, that fact that they carry out, those who carry out evil things. So God is ultimately sending countless millions to an eternal, uh, unimaginable, horrific suffering for eternity in hell for committing sins that he determined that they would have no other ability to do but to commit those sins. So I think that's problematic. I think that presents a 
view of God that is a bit um, not not to be abrasive for the sake of being abrasive, but I think it's a bit monstrous, um, and I think it's unjust. Um, I think the response will be a Romans 9, who are you, O man, to answer back to God? I would just say we can get into that later, and I think you're completely missing the point of who that objector is. But I think this is the ultimate implications of Calvinism that teach is that I think gives sinners, you know, the ultimate excuse before God. I mean, they are the ultimate victims of, of the universe, I would, I, I would argue, the non-elect, the reprobate. And so... I think this presents a, a pretty distorted view and understanding of God, what he's like, what he thinks about people, and the limits and bounds of his mercy, grace, and love. So my point here, I'm not trying to be a heresy hunter, not trying to demonize people who believe this. I'm not trying to say they're not Christians. I know many people I've already seen in some of my other videos uh, kind of want me to call this out as you know the teachers out as you know damned heretics and things like that that's i'm not going to do that i don't i'm not the judge of these guys and as far as i can tell with most of them in the amount of time i've spent listening to them and hearing them out i would say that you know those like john piper are good men um, who are just mistaken about different things this being one of them and so I'm not trying to be that the goal of this these videos isn't to to demonize these people but simply to offer a critique of Calvinism to offer what I think are better ways of handling different scriptures all this to just kind of give you an idea of where I'm coming from uh, a sort of an intro as I start to kind of get back into making videos around this topic this is of all the different things I cover on the channel I would say this this really is one of the the topics I'm most most passionate about. You know, one of the goals of this channel is just to do what I can to kind of speak into and, and critique what I consider to be harmful views of God. I do ultimately think that Calvinism and its implications, if people embrace the ultimate implications of this system, I think it's harmful. I think it's harmful emotionally and spiritually. I think that can be demonstrated in a variety of examples, documented examples, um, whether it's from articles or videos, uh, people leaving Christianity as a whole uh, because of Calvinism. I think, you know, even moments where there's evangelical uh, situations going on, people trying to evangelize and Calvinism becomes sort of this stumbling block. I, I've seen a whole variety of things. I've seen enough to, to be convinced that I think it is harmful, it is detrimental um, to those, I think, that again, embrace its ultimate implications and then really consider that as they try to live life. All this to say, I hope you understand a little bit more where I'm coming from as, as I get back into making some videos on this topic. Yeah, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, if you're new to the channel. And I'd also love to hear your thoughts, your, your comments and, and questions. If you're a Calvinist who completely disagrees with everything I'm saying, thinks I'm an idiot, I'm fine with that. I'd love to hear from you guys as well. And as uh, best as, as we can, let's just engage, you know, whether it's in the comments or other places in some healthy, respectful conversations about these things. And um, I think everybody should be allowed to have an opinion and questions around this and to be able to express that to each other in a way that's not you know vitriolic and um, aggressive. I think there's a way to engage in this conversation with each other that is loving where we look like children of God and that is a light in the world.